I don't know. What do you think about the whole peaceful thing? Because if there's corals next to them, they can definitely just overgrow. Yeah, I've actually... One of my coworkers does maintenance on some tanks, and he actually had green star polyps growing up the stalk of his toadstool in one of his like maintenance customer tank, which I thought was crazy. In today's episode of the Coral Reef Talk podcast, we're talking about soft corals uh, that are pretty easy to care for. And um, what's up, Levi? How are you doing today? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing all right. A little bit tired today, but you know what? We got some good uh, stuff for everyone out there that we're going to be talking about. Um, which are soft corals. Now, soft corals are usually uh, the go-to coral for beginners. Um, If you're brand new to the hobby, it's what is recommended across the board. Usually, it's to start with soft corals. So we're going to be talking about a handful of corals today. Um, I picked out a few. You picked out a few. Um, What do you got for us? All right. So, well, let me let me break down soft corals real quick before. I yeah, that's good. That's probably a good idea. Um, so yeah, soft corals, like you said, uh, a lot of uh, beginners reach out and try to find some soft corals to start out with, obviously because they're relatively easier than LPS and uh, SPS. Um, and there's multiple different species of soft corals. Soft corals covers a wide range of corals, including some non-photosynthetic corals that are actually a little bit challenging. Um, and sometimes I know certain beginners that like see the striking colors of some non-photosynthetics and immediately think, oh my goodness, I have to have that in my tank. Um, But there's there's ways around that, um, and maybe eventually down the road, that's a cool thing to add um, as far as the non-photosynthetics. But definitely, I would recommend, if you are a beginner, sticking to the photosynthetic soft corals, and I'll try to break that down here in a second uh, when I'm explaining the corals that I chose for this episode. Yeah, that's good. Different types of soft corals um, can be tricky for some beginners, especially if they're choosing non-photosynthetic, like you're saying. Because mm-hmm. uh, NPS, you have to you have to feed them, yes. right? So, yep. yeah, they're not getting the the light source, or they're not growing from light like your yeah. typical soft coral. Um, so, when looking at soft corals, one that comes to my mind that is uh, one that I recommend a lot, just because I I really like this coral. A lot of people probably um, have different opinions on this coral because it can grow really fast and take over the tank. But I feel like that's um, with a lot of soft corals, that's kind of what can happen. A lot. Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. a lot of them grow pretty quickly and can become a problem, like just take over your tank um, type thing. But the first one here is the Kenya tree coral. Um, ever since I started the hobby, I've been a huge fan of this coral and mainly because of the movement that it gives your reef tank. Um, like if you're looking for something that's super easy to care for, that doesn't really, uh, worry about parameter swings. Cause as a beginner hobbyist, you're learning the chemistry of your tank. You're learning, um, what to test for, you're learning how to keep your aquarium stable. Um, sometimes you add more fish than you should at the beginning, or you add more corals than you should or something in the beginning. Any, anyway, there's room for error, especially if you're brand new to anything. Um, so with that being said, a coral like this, and you usually withstand those different parameter swings. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the Kenya tree coral. Uh, it's also known as like the cauliflower soft coral. Um, but one of one really good ones for beginners. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely recommend them for beginners. Um, if you're aiming to like have it in a certain area, I definitely try to recommend like leaving it on an island if you don't want it to take over your whole scape. Um, but even with the island, they, they tend to like drop little buds. I don't know if you notice this, but they like kind of almost bud off. Mm-hmm. And like a bud kind of floats around the tank and it reattaches somewhere else and it starts growing. Yeah, uh, like this mm-hmm. whole area back here. If you're watching yeah. on the video podcast, you can see the side of the tank. Like those are like buds that just fell off or pieces I found from the other side of the tank. And I just threw in that corner because this is like the Kenya, Kenya tree section of the aquarium. Yeah. But yeah, they definitely drop buds and just start growing everywhere. But I mean, if you're looking for a coral that's super easy and it looks really good and it goes with the flow and it just has really good movement that's definitely a coral 
that I recommend. So, yeah, for sure. And um, they they thrive in a variety of different lighting conditions mm -hmm. too. So, um, if you don't have the fanciest, uh, most powerful LED light fixture, and you have like T fives or something like that, they're going to do just fine. Mm -hmm. Like like we're saying, like this is a, a coral that um, can really just thrive in a variety of different environments. So yeah. it's great, great yeah. for beginners. Um, and then, so that, that's my first one. That That's my go-to recommendation for anyone just starting a reef aquarium. Like you don't want to throw LPS or definitely SPS in your tank right away. Like mm -hmm. get your feet wet first, figure things out. It's a good one to start with. And now you, you've got some interesting ones. I mean, you are the oddball reefer, so I know you got I know you got some stuff for us today. What what do you got? Yeah, so the first one here, this is uh more recently new to the hobby. Uh, this is the Chromaneptia. I have an article on reef builders about these. They're definitely unique. Um, I've had my specimens for a few months now, and they're doing excellent. Um, and honestly, I don't take care of like the tank as I should. I kind of just let it go. I do a water change every other week. Um, but I mean, I feed the tank, but I just don't closely like monitor it constantly all day. Uh, probably like I should, but it's been doing great. I got three specimens in the tank. I got like a yellow variety, red variety. And then this one, uh, that is at my work, it's super unique. It has like a white base, purple tips with the red center. I mean, they're, they're gorgeous. Definitely. I wouldn't recommend this for like a beginner just getting into the hobby but if you have a decently established tank i think this specific species would actually be um very good to put in your tank to add some color um i've noticed them to be similar to chili corals as far as like care wise uh they're definitely like compared to a dendroneptia which is a regular carnation coral um i'd say definitely a little bit easier i've definitely struggled with the dendroneptia uh, more than the chromoneptia this this is one very hardy coral as i've noticed so far um and my specimens in the little lagoon over here have actually grown a little bit too so i mean that's a good sign uh but definitely something unique and odd to add to the tank and i'm super excited to be bringing this into the hobby in the united states so super stoked to see how this kind of travels around the aquarium hobby yeah that's very cool what's um some of the differences between this coral and the first one we showed the kenya tree coral because so yeah that's similar shape and stuff yeah they definitely have a similar shape and i mean even the polyps when they're closed up kind of look very similar mm -hmm. uh, but obviously this is a non-photosynthetic coral so it's definitely yep. going to need some food and like a little bit of nutrients in the water um but like i said if you have like a established tank that's been up for a year or two i mean you really shouldn't have any issues it's really not much different than a chili coral from what i've noticed in care like i said um, and chili corals, I mean, you could pretty easily keep them in a decently established tank where they can kind of just feed on detritus and such that kind of floats around in the water column. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely unique and different. So, Gotcha. Yeah, and when feeding these, like how often are you feeding non-photosynthetic corals? So this specific tank that these corals are in, I feed once a day. Okay. Um, and every so often I'll throw in some more in the evening, but usually every morning when I wake up, I uh, dose the tank with some phyto feast and oyster feast from reef nutrition. Um, Cause usually at nighttime, these are fully open and already mm -hmm. like out and feeding. So when I wake up in the morning, uh, they're all opened up and I go ahead and feed the tank then. And a lot of the times these are even wide open during the day now. Uh, so if I come home and throw a little food in the tank, um, they tend to open right up or they're already open. So it's always cool to see them open during the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, on a regular basis, I feed the tank once a day and have not had any issues with this species. So, Gotcha. And then, like, do you kind of view this as, like, when you have fish in the tank, like, obviously you don't want to overfeed your aquarium. Mm -hmm. um, but... Are you focused, like, you have your water change scheduled down for this? Um, do you have, like, really good filtrations to make to make sure that as you're feeding the tank every day, um, yeah. you're not um, polluting the water and stuff like that? So I have a little protein skimmer on the back of this tank. Um, that okay. obviously helps remove nutrients. And then I have an NPX uh, bioplastic 
uh, reactor uh, from Two Little Fishies. It's the little uh, little reactor uh, with some pellets in it, and it just kind of stirs throughout the day, and obviously that bacteria removes some nutrients and helps with phosphates in the aquarium. Um, but I have had no issues. I do water changes on this tank like every other week pretty consistently, and everything seems to do amazing and grow really well in there right now. So, Very cool. Yeah, so definitely keeping up with your uh, – tank maintenance when it comes to non photosynthetic corals is very, very important. Um, Definitely. You don't want to pollute your tank really fast. I mean, it's important across the board in the hobby, yeah. but, but specifically talking about that coral. Um, awesome. So the next one up for me, uh, this is one that this coral I love because it adds a pop of color to your reef tank. Um, you're not s stuck with like the browns and the pinks and the stuff um, mm -hmm. that you, I guess, normally would see in the tank. If you want splashes of color as a beginner in the hobby, you can definitely add um, some green star polyp to the tank. Uh, now, green star polyp, um, it will encrust and grow over the rock work. Um, if your rock's close enough to the back of your tank, it's going to like grow off the rock and stretch up. Uh, onto the back glass. That's what I've noticed with mine. Um, there are uh, some different species of this. The one that I'm showing um, will cover uh, your rock work and take over. And it just it adds motion to your reef tank as well. Um, they're nice, bright, vibrant green, which is really cool. Um, they're very peaceful. They're not going to... Well, I don't know. What do you think about the whole peaceful thing? Because if there's corals next to them, they can definitely just overgrow. Yeah, I've actually, one of my coworkers does maintenance on some tanks, and he actually had green star polyps growing up the stalk of his toadstool in one of his, like, maintenance customer tank, which I thought was crazy. But that shows you right there that, yeah, they will grow over other corals. Mm -hmm. um, so even like I said with the candy trees, if you don't want it all over your tank, I'd recommend trying to seclude it to like a little island on the sand or something. Yeah. Uh, but in big colonies, like stretched out throughout the tank, it, they look so gorgeous with their movement and their color. It obviously sticks out and attracts people's eyes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's really cool to keep. Uh, there, like you said, there's a lot of different varieties of it, too. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen some that like tend to branch out a little bit. And I've seen some with like uh, different colors, like neon centers and, and like yeah. white pot, like branches. I mean, they're just super unique. There's definitely a few different varieties that you can try to mix in there too. So, yeah. And, and the tip about um, isolating them to their own piece of rock, I feel like that is going to be a big tip for at least the three corals that I have here today is isolating them if you don't want them to spread. However, even doing that sometimes I feel like they're still just going to get to another part of the tank. Like you'll just find, find them popping up. Like, yeah. if, like, I don't know. Um, not so much, maybe not so much with the green star polyps, but definitely Kenya trees. Yeah, Kenya with trees the with the budding and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. If you're brand new listening to this or watching the podcast to be a video um, and you want to splash a color, definitely look at the green star polyp. They are not too challenging to care for. Um, and they grow in different parts of the tank too, like as far as heights of the tank. Like you can put them down near the sand bed. They're going to do well in low light. Uh, they're going to do well in medium light and they will adjust and do well in highlighting environments too. Yep. Um, so like the, the video we're showing here, these green star polyps are at the top of my rock work in the 125. And I would say they're probably, let's see, it's 20 something inches, Steve. So I would say they're probably six to 10 inches from the top, something like that. So, I mean, they're pretty close to the top, maybe, maybe shorter than that um, without an exact measurement, but they're at the top of the rock work. So they're in highlighting, they're right underneath the LED light fixture too. Um, so they're definitely getting a lot of par and you can see how fluffy, um, and extended the polyps are like they're, they're out, they're happy. And the water flow plays a, a important factor as well. Yeah. Um, cause you want water flow going across your green star polyps to not only deliver like 
the nutrition that they need, but push, um, like you don't want anything settling on it, like detritus or anything. You want to push mm -hmm. all the waste and stuff away from the coral. So you want to give it nice water flow too. You don't want too intense of water flow, right? Like you don't want to blast this coral. Yeah. Um, but you want to give it enough to where you get that constant motion of the polyps. So nice little pulsing water flow movement. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks really good. But yeah, even in this clip, you can see that it's kind of growing over these, growing over and on these um, Kenya tree corals. Mm -hmm. Like it's stretching way up there. But yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of green star polyps, and they're easy to frag too. So if you're yeah, looking to sure. yeah. get into uh, growing corals too and making frags and trying to make a little money on the side or something, you know, uh, they're definitely easy to grow and frag and yeah really cool my second favorite soft coral that we got yeah. I believe this is going to be the sarcophyton yes or no the sternoptia sternoptia okay. yeah. so this is a sternoptia um and i mean even for beginners i mean i'd recommend waiting a little bit like a month or so to put this in your tank after you've added some more coral mm -hmm. uh, but it is it's like half and half between photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic. It is partially photosynthetic. It uses some light to grow, uh, but it also uses a little food. So it's definitely different. Um, this picture doesn't really do the justice on this coral. It's like bright pink, or not pink, like purple. It's okay. really pretty. and has like a white base, and the polyps are bright, bright purple. I mean, they're really, really pretty. Um, this is probably like half extended right now. It gets pretty big now, and it's grown quite a bit since this photo was taken. Um, and if you look real close at the uh, base, you can't really see on this picture, but it, it really looks like the carnation or has those little um, spigules or whatever in it to help support the uh, stalk and help them stay extended into the water column. Uh, but if you're looking for a coral that's easier than like a carnation coral, per se, I definitely look for a steranepthia. Uh, there's a couple different ones out there um so it's definitely a coral it'll definitely add some color and it'll throw you a little challenge at the same time by kind of feeding it a little here and there uh, but it'll definitely add some color to your system and i mean they're honestly relatively easy to keep i mean I, this is in the same tank as the chromonaptia so i mean i feed it like once a day faithfully and that's okay. really about it so i mean do it's doing really great and it grows pretty quick so it's probably doubled in size since i took this picture nice yeah it looks it looks fluffy man yeah and i don't know a better term for it yeah but it yeah, looks it's like the thing's fluffy cool. so what? at night it like shrinks up into like a little ball almost and it's like a solid purple ball i mean it's super weird but it's super cool so i got two of these actually one's like a purplish color and then one's like a whitish kind of mm -hmm. brown color it's different so yeah yeah that's pretty awesome so where um so for like the beginner or average reefer looking for these types of corals um because this is kind of an uncommon soft coral right yes where um i mean how would they get their hands on one is this something that they just have to like scope out the local fish store and just look and try to find it or like request so, it or... i mean yeah i definitely you probably have to request at a local fish store i mean some local fish stores may get it in a lot of these come in as act on accident from like when we import them and stuff um they come in as like a little kenya tree or something but it's obvious it's definitely different it's a whole separate genus um yeah. so like a lot of these come in on accident so they're not as common but if you request the uh, staring up the specifically you should be able to get your hands on one uh, especially if your local fish store orders from my like, wholesalers around the country. I mean, they're not uncommon, but they're not common. They're kind of like in between. You don't see them too often, uh, but they pop up every so often. So, yeah, or looking online. I mean, some online uh, stores have them. They have the, um, I think they call it like pink lemonade, staring up the other or something. That's That's online. There's quite a few vendors that have that and grow it. Uh, but I got a couple that I picked up at a wholesaler in it. I mean, they're just different colors and they're different strains. So I'm going to see what happens with them. 
Gotcha. And as far as like lighting conditions for this one, is this, um, cause this is like, uh, do they come from like shallow reefs? So I'm guessing it's, it's definitely from a little deeper. I mean, it doesn't require an okay. astronomical amount of light. I want to say my tank's probably like eight inches deep and it's on the bottom on the sand bed. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I'd say moderate light to even low light. Um, cause they, they'll, like you'll notice if you kind of like tuck them away, they will expand out and try to reach for some light. Mm, so, okay. And I just have this on the open sand bed and it does really well. I'd say moderate flow too. It definitely likes a little bit of flow. So. Well, next up I have everyone's favorite coral. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say everyone's favorite coral. I say that jokingly because a lot of people do not like this coral um just because this coral can grow like a weed in your aquarium um and that's the pulsing xenia coral uh but this coral has always been interesting and fascinating to me uh because it moves independently of it like it pulses back and forth um got a lot of the self tang. i miss my <laughs> self tang. um let me freeze frame it on the xenia so yeah, pulsing zinnia is another one of those corals that's going to um, do well in different spots in the aquarium. As far as lighting is concerned, it can do well in low lighting, moderate or medium lighting and high lighting as well. Um, it will adapt to that. But however, this is also a coral that um, can just melt away and disappear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, so what are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, this is an easy coral that will grow to like uh, large proportions and can take over your tank. But then uh, some people have experience where they put it in their tank and it's just gone. It just melts away instantly. So Xenia is definitely one of my favorite corals. I collect a lot of different kinds of Xenia, the pulsing. Mm -hmm. So there's some other different species as well. Um, but... I've, I've seen people like with tanks full of Xenia and it looks gorgeous because I mean they're pulsing. It looks really, really nice. Um, and then I've seen people that like buy Xenia and that can't grow it and it just melts away. I've had that happen to myself before uh, where I get a little Xenia frag and it just melts and I'm so confused. And then I have some that do great and grow like a weed and it's, it's definitely strange. But it's definitely a coral that any beginner should kind of try. Um, and if you do isolate this on a rock, I mean, I think you'd be okay. You might get a couple buds that kind of float off here and there, but it's such a gorgeous coral and has some unique movement that hardly any other coral has. And I don't even think any other coral has this movement, the pulsating movement. It's just super unique to this coral and it's such a graceful movement. I mean, it's satisfying to watch in your system. Um, I'd probably say like a low to moderate flow for this guy. I mean, it, if you want to see it really pulse, uh, give it some nutrients in the system as well because um, they'll pulse like crazy. But they're super unique and super gorgeous, and there's a lot of different strains of Xenia as well. So just keep that in mind. You can get this pulsing one. There's like a Red Sea pulsing one, and there's multiple other different species of Xenia. So for sure. Yeah, and it's um, it's one of those things where like, you don't know exactly why it disappears on you. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes things like that happens in your reef tank. Um, but like you're saying, yeah, it's definitely a good one to try as a beginner um, because you get that unique motion that's like no other corals are really doing that. Like this yeah. is very unique to this coral, the, the pulsing motion. And um, yeah, they can like dirty your tanks too. And um, it's been talked about like maybe that's the reason, like if you keep a uh, higher nutrient rich aquarium they're going to do really well um but even then um i've had them just melt away too mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's one of my all-time favorite corals and and don't lay um i would say don't let um the idea of them growing and taking over over your tank scare you from getting into them um just stay on top of it yeah like, i mean they're, they're top of the a frag and stuff too really I mean, it's just yeah. like a single stalk that branches out from the rock. You just take some bone cutters and clip them off, and there you go. Yeah, for sure. So if you're staying on top of your, your tank and you notice that it butted off or something and you don't want it there, 
and take it down and give it to a friend. Um, you could probably even get some store credit at a local fish store or something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, if you're, if you don't want it to take over, like I know a lot of people see that as an, as a good thing. Well, they want their corals to grow really fast and they want like this whole side of their tank to be taken over with coral. Um, like I, I'm very happy with my Kenya tree taking over one side of my aquarium. I think that's awesome to have a little forest. Um, but I don't know. It's preference because I've, I've had people comment and say, hey, you need to get rid of that. Prune prune your Kenya trees. Get those out of there. Yeah. So, I mean, the real the thing is, like me personally, when I set up a system or a tank, I want it mm -hmm. to look as natural as possible. So, I mean, a lot of people nowadays uh, recently kind of tend to just do frags. Like, oh, yeah, I got a column. Yeah. But it's like, a, like something the size of a little frag. And I'm like, in the wild – you got colonies that are football fields long. Like, oh, yeah. and I mean, mm -hmm. when I see people commenting on people's like tanks all the time on like Facebook and online, like, why do you have so much Xenia? It doesn't look good. It does like, that's not like, that's your opinion. Like some people mm -hmm. like to have certain corals take over. Like it looks more natural in my opinion, when you have a lot of the same coral in the tank. I mean, you have a huge variety of coral. Like, I mean, I do in my lagoon, so I can't really say much. But yeah. I got to have some place to put the corals I collect. But, um, I mean, yeah, like, if you're aiming for more of a nat natural system or a natural soft coral tank, I mean, just kind of let them go. Like, let them do yeah. their thing. So, yeah, definitely. Let, let them grow. See how they grow. Um, see what they grow over, how they take over the rock work. And your aquarium can turn into something that... Um, is maybe even more beautiful than you've envisioned, you know? So, um, yeah, like I'm, I've been a big fan of just putting the corals in and just let it like, see what happens. Like, yeah, I, like exactly. I know Julian sprung has a pretty natural looking, uh, reef aquarium too. Like you let that thing, like just let nature do its thing. Yeah, you know, for sure. Exactly. Um, and now this, this other one that you you have, this thing, oh, thing looks, looks pretty cool. I mean, you want to set it up before I throw the picture up there? So, uh, Paramenabea. So, it's it's a weird coral. Um, we're still kind of trying to figure out exactly where it came from. We kind of know where it came from. We believe it came from Hong Kong to Vietnam, but we're not entirely sure. Um, but that's where it originates from. So, this is Paramenabea rubesia. Super gorgeous. A lot of people say it's like, oh, it's a chili sponge or it's a chili coral. I mean, it looks very similar, but it's not. This is a totally separate genus and a totally separate species. Um, it's very smooth, unlike the chili coral. The chili coral has like a lot of more bumpy texture to it. Um, and it is one of the most gorgeous corals I've ever seen in my life. And I've had this coral for almost a year now. And, I mean, it's growing. Uh, it's not the fastest grower, but it's definitely growing. Um, and it's in the lagoon tank, so it gets fed once a day on like faithfully, and it it's amazing. It's it polyps out during the day. I mean, this obviously this is a daytime shot. It's just such a unique, gorgeous coral. It's non photosynthetic, so keep that in mind. Uh, but I have had no issues keeping this coral. I've went away for weeks and haven't fed it, and it does amazing. Um, I mean, with the system being up as long as it has been, I mean. You can even see some little telesto corals kind of just growing. So this system definitely has some nutrients and some food to be offered. Um, but it's just such a gorgeous coral. And if you're looking for something different that looks different and that adds some color to your tank, um, I definitely recommend this if you're able to get your hands on it. Uh, I haven't seen it in the hobby since I picked this specimen up. Um, but I'm hoping once Vietnam opens back up, uh, with some CITES uh, that we'll be able to get some more of these in because they're just super gorgeous. And I've never seen them in the U.S. before last year. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I definitely recommend it because the red coloration you don't get to see too often. Yeah, that that red is awesome. And, and the way the polyps look too is really neat. Yeah, for sure. So Yeah, so having having like greens and some pinks and purples and then having this red like in your tank would definitely pop off like it's really cool yeah most definitely so and i mean you can see this like yes it's non-photosynthetic but i mean 
you can look at this core right here and see that it's like it's obviously sitting wide open in the light. So I have yeah. it kind of on a little cliff on in the tank that it's in, and it kind of just branches out into the current. And I mean, it's obviously getting a lot of light, but I have had no issues whatsoever. Every so often, it will close up for a day or two and kind of like shed. I'm not entirely mm. sure why it does that or what the reasoning is for, um, but it kind of sheds like an exo layer of skin and Interesting. It opens right back up. So similar to like a toadstool, how it slimes up. Yeah, and yeah it's kind of like a toadstool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it does that. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure why. It just does it every so often. But, I mean, it's wide open the next day after it sheds. So, like, if you're able to get your hands on I definitely recommend it because it's such a unique coral. Um, and if you can't find this one, you could probably find a chili coral relatively easily. They're quite easy to find. They're quite common. Um, and I'd say they have the same care requirements as this coral. Just feed it every so often. Yeah. Uh, give it some flow, and you shouldn't have an issue. So. Nice. Yeah. And, and if you're setting up a, a tank and you have like photosynthetic corals, regular soft corals or like the typical Kenya tree and green star polyps, you can definitely add some NPS to the tank or non photosynthetics mm -hmm. to the tank because um, just take some time to, to feed it. Um, but yeah, that, that is a really interesting one. Thank you for bringing all of these like odd and really unique corals to the mix man you, you yeah, no problem. soft corals we mentioned today pretty easy to care for <clears throat> um these non-photosynthetic corals uh pretty easy to care for as well as long as you are feeding them and you're watching your um tank parameters and making sure you're not overfeeding the tank right mm -hmm. yeah so if you've made it to the deep end of the podcast thank you for watching or listening all the way through um, if you have any questions for us definitely leave them in the comments below um, we'll link some of these corals in the description and the show notes for you to take a look at some of the care requirements and stuff as well um, but is there anything else you want to share about um, non-photosynthetic corals or soft corals or is there something that um, as a beginner reefer that uh, they should consider when they're getting into corals? So as a beginner, if you're looking, so it really depends when you're setting up your tank um, and you are a beginner uh, and you're seeing all these beginner corals, it really depends on where you want to go. Because if you want to aim for some more LPS and maybe even some SPS in the future, I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting a bunch of like the um, zinnias and the kidney trees because, I mean, once they do kind of like grow and flourish in your tank, you will have issues trying to get them all out if you're going to go into like some SPS um, and some LPS. And I'm not saying you can keep like a mixed reef. Like you can. It's possible. Uh, but with certain corals, you just got to be careful um, and kind of just foresee your plan for that tank ahead. Um, so like when I set up a tank, I try to plan what I want to do with that specific tank let it do its thing, let it cycle, and then kind of slowly start to add things um, to kind of get the tank to where I want it to be. Um, but yeah, like I said, just if you're setting up a tank and you're a beginner, just kind of think of what you want that tank to be down the road and just kind of aim for that. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, for sure. And you can always change things up later too. Mm -hmm. um, like frag some corals out, take some corals out of the tank put new corals in but yeah definitely like you said um just know the goal of your aquarium know what you want to set up or envision like know what you want it to be and then work towards that goal mm -hmm. Pretty exactly. much. very cool thank you so much for um listening to the podcast and watching the video if you're here on youtube uh be sure to like comment and subscribe so we can keep on bringing you um this kind of content here on the channel but that's it for today. Soft corals, non-photosynthetic corals. Some pretty amazing corals out there. So For sure. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank yeah, you, thanks Levi. for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening in. All right. And we will see you in the next one. If you like this episode of the Coral Reef Talk podcast, go ahead and click or tap your screen to watch or listen to this video next. Mm -hmm.